Hey guys, it's me again, Orkslayer. What is where we last left off? Let's see, check, check, checking. Where we last left off on What If Bell was Fume Knight. He essentially got Lily, found out some of her issues, offered her to place in Hestia's Familia. They went over there to stay at the church for an entire night. Bell had an argument with Dahlia inside his very head, got annoyed with her, essentially. Just no doubt that conversation. Woke up with headache. Then they proceed to literally just walk down to the Soma Familia's place. He cleared the way essentially by telling everybody to move. They got in, went to go talk to Soma, and then finally, finally, <sighs> finally, talked to Soma, got a little free from, you know, the whole bond and all that. They got a bit drunk. Well, Lily and Nadalia did. Bell essentially got a hangover. Go on, Sam. Up. Oh, I ain't gonna stop you. And that's where we left off, essentially. So I'm just gonna say, they take a day. Or at very least, Lily takes a day. As he essentially just takes her back to Hestia. And essentially... Lily gets registered with uh, Hesia as her familiar member. Now, I'm going to focus on some other people for a little bit. As Bell just goes down to Jonjin's business as usual. As we get down to it, you have a couple of people overlooking him. As you can see, Freya and Otar, as people know. Otar... <sighs> is the strongest adventurer in the in Orario at the current moment. He is Hestia's captain, if I remember. And so Freya has taken an interest in Bell. Not not only for his, as she would call it, unique looking soul. But she's also very interested in that dark mass, or dark being as she would call it, attached to it. For the guys who can't really remember, essentially, Bell gave a portion of his soul to Nadalia. To where she could reside inside of Bell, in a way. That way she's no longer bound to the tower, the broom tower, I believe it's called the broom or fume tower. So she can now travel along with him and that gives him a couple of special abilities like the ignite, igniting his sword on fire as well as the fact that he can now control the ashen soldiers. Which they're relatively, if you were to compare them to him, it's essentially... Not Pokemon system, but... <sighs> Sorry for yawning. They essentially do a... I'm trying to remember the exact words I would use for this. It's like they sort of take... Not take, but... Let's, let's say Bell's level 2. They're level 1, essentially. They don't really take his skills, they just sort of get a boost of what they originally can do, depending on what level he is. So if he was level 6, they'd be like, depending on how much effort he put into it, because he can summon them at multiple different times, he could maybe, if he just summoned one of them, he summoned them at like level 5. But the more he summons, the more effort you could say he has put in them so he summons i believe i said i gave him six of them i believe is the number i gave him if he summoned all six of them if he was level six they would only be like level three it's a way to where they're not too powerful or also to a way to where he can effectively utilize them since they're not very skilled with weapons or anything they're a lot like a minotaur you would say <sighs> though of course there's the different other creatures that were in the fume tower 
if you guys remember one, like, so armors, like, possessed armor, as well as those giant golem things. I forget what they're called. Try and remember their name, but I can't. And then, of course, you have the Smelter Demon. Yep. Everybody remembers him, because he was just a reskin with delayed attacks. <sighs> that was stupid. But, hey. Blue armor looks... The blue sword looks good, I guess. But I digress. As we cut back to Freya... Like, sorry, I went on a tangent there. Freya is essentially wanting to test him in a way. She has taken an interest into him, uh, t taken an interest in him, just, li just like how Freya took an interest in the original. She is curious to see this, and she wants to see how far he can be pushed. Because she doesn't know his motives to get here, but from what she can tell, it's obvious to at least seek some form of strength or power. For what, she doesn't really care. She just wants to see him struggle, in a way. So, she orders Otar to go down to the dungeons and try to get something that could make... Like, essentially what he does with the Minotaur. He thinks that this would probably be a good way to get Bell a worthy opponent, to some degree. As in, we cut back over to a different character who actually sees Orario. He looks upon it and it's just like... A city. Orario. Where the very gods themselves came down to Earth. Where were these gods when our land was invaded by the giants? <sighs> it's like, I must find Ra Bell. Or... He says, I must find Rame. As he continues his march down, he's just like, I must find him, get him to come back. Velstat needs allies as much as I hate it. Because Velstat is seeing the way Bell sees things. He sees the world, how it's falling down, but there are still quite a few people who are very loyal to Vendrick. That is one of the hard things for Velstat is that he based our entire religion and actually sort of put Ventric at the head of it in a way by saying that he was sent by the heavens to bring them together. Now the problem is is that with all that going down, they have like there's a lot of them that have a very, very deep faith that runs in them. But then you also have the opposite on that end when it came to Bell or Rain. All his soldiers were handpicked and ones that followed him completely. And they listened to what he had to say. He believed in 100, 100% that their entire point for fighting with Vendrick should be to... Because he believed in Vendrick too. He believed in, him in the, the vision Vendrick had for the kingdom have them united against any threat like the giants and so and they all believe it was for the well of the kingdom but they also saw what was happening when Nashonda showed up they saw the sky grow dark things just start taking a turn for the worse so all they had the idea to do what was necessary for the kingdom while Vel Statsman had the idea of planning in them that Vendrick would protect the kingdom and keep it safe so when bell rose up it was a very it was seen like a coup that bell was trying to take over and since bell a lot of the time bell actually kept to himself he didn't like the idea of velstat's cult essentially he didn't like it but again i digress as we see this war this warrior who has some form of golden armor. It, think of it like Velstat, but smaller, and instead of a giant bell, he uses an actual hammer instead of freaking bell, like I said. And his armor isn't as grand, it's golden. 
But it doesn't have the very big head crest thing that he has. It's a simple golden helmet with a hammer. The armor is very simple in design too. It doesn't have that cloak of chainmail or whatever that was. I don't, you guys can understand what I'm saying. He knows a few spells and miracles that he could use against Bell if it came down to it. Though he still highly doubts his ability to actually get Bell to come along. Though this guy is relatively... V relative is relative to Velstat, and that's why Velstat sent him. But the problem is, Bell's an adventurer now, and I can't remember if he's reached level two yet. So, yeah, that's how it is. But again, I digress. Who? As we cut back to Bell and Hestia and Lily. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <sighs> uh, I'm trying to figure out a word this. Give me a second. Uh, yep, okay. Frick, ah, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, give me a second. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. It's been quite a bit of time since I started recording this part. I had a writer's block. You heard me stumbling a bunch. That's what that was. Man. It was a lot harder than I remembered. It's probably because I have a lot more ideas going on. And the new seasons of... Dan Machi, I've, I've been watching him, and I, I'm really excited. But I realized some things. Uh, the Black Minotaur in, is a character. He's an important character. He's a character that's made from Bell, fighting the Minotaur. So, I don't quite know how to handle some of those situations. I am worried. Well, we'll s I'll just have to deal with it when I get to it. But as we cut back to Bell. This, today he decided to go solo by himself without Lily. And this is like a, like a day or two after, after he has just gotten done with Lily. If I'm back on track, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. As he's heading to the dungeon, he's thinking to himself... Oh, that whole debacle is dealt with. As he's walking to the dungeon, he can see the vast amount of people also heading there for the daily grind. As he sees one red-haired man with a giant sword on his back waving at people, talking with them, trying to get them to interact, but each of them just turns away from him. As Bell's just like... Okay. As Nadali is just like, don't go near him. Start walking faster, faster, faster. As Bell's like, what are you talking about? I was like, he's looking to join somebody, and you don't need a babysit at the moment. As he's just like, what? <sighs> Nadalia, really, I'm not in the mood for your antics. This is this is just annoying at this point. She's like. Fine, don't listen to me. It's not like I have lived for hundreds of years. What would I know is like, you're, what you are is a pain in the side. She's like, ooh, that's a new one. Come up with something fresh, idiot. He's like, I'll just go see what he wants. What's the worst going to happen? It's like, he has to be part of your party and you have to watch over him constantly. It's just like. That's exactly what I did in the military when I led my frickin' ravens. And the armies against the giants. How is this any different? She's like... You're fucking softy. She leaves his head for a moment as he's just like... Well, let's go see what this guy needs. As he approaches him, well... As you guys can tell, it's Wolf Crozo. 
as Wolf turns around, he sees his very tall man in dark, gloomy armor. As Belle looks down at him, he's like, did you need something? It's just like, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, yes. Are, are you perhaps looking for a party member? As Belle's like, not particularly. Why? <laughs> As Wolf's like, well, you see here, there, there's, um, I would like to get to lower floors, and it's like, and nobody's wanting to party up with you. He's like, hey, yes. Hmm. Why? Um, it's hard to explain. It's just like, come on, what? You can explain on the way down there. Come on. As well as just like, oh. oh. Oh, 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 as he's like gets back up and like wraps his pack. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm coming as Nadal is just like, this is so sad. Really? You're going to, I don't understand you. It's just like, <sighs> it has always been, never mind. Nadal is like, yeah, yeah. Tell me, what is it? Are you going to say you always want to be a hero? To help those out of the kindness of your heart? He's like, yes. Simply just my nature, Nadalia. He's like, huh? Nature. Human nature is to backstab and murder each other for the slightest inconvenience. He's just like, that's not our only nature. I... I admit, humanity's a little chaotic, but we aren't just bad. She's just like, huh. Say that to Vendrick. Vendrick is like, was corrupted by my sister. Though his intentions were good, they have most surely been misplaced now. Alright, and he's like, well, what about my father? Your father only cared about his little group. Your father was anything like you believed, being wanting to help everybody and all that. Your father may have been the one leading the country, not the uh, not with Vendrick at the top. Bell's like, like I said, humanity is chaotic. We aren't a singular entity. We aren't gods that have millennia to be around. We aren't even comparable to you, you fragment of a creature. All we got is ourselves. In this... Cold... Ruthless and destitute world. That will as soon as eat you and spit you out for lunch... Has raised you up so that way you could touch the stars. As well starts to explaining to him why he isn't really welcome. It's because Wolf Crozo is a very well known person, as far as I know. It's because if you guys don't know or don't remember, he had his family bloodline, especially speci very specifically, him has a very rare ability to just make magic swords. Some of the best magic swords ever. As Belle explains a little bit of this, Belle's just like, what's wrong with magical swords? It's like, as Wolf sort of gets a look on his face. As he explains that a magical sword is a very powerful sword, but it's also very breakable. That eventually it will break and abandon you, as you would say. As Belle starts thinking about it, he's just like, yeah, I know what you mean. As Wolf's like, what? And he's like, I spent my whole life fighting Wolf. Anytime there was... Anytime on the battlefield, your friends are gonna... Your friends could die. Your brother, your lover, your child. Any one of those things could leave you. Like that. With a snap of a finger. 
the one thing that never leaves your side as long as you got a good grip and have a proper hold is your weapon as Bell sort of with the giant sword on his back since like I said before he doesn't use it all the time as he holds up his normal long sword to wealth he's just like this sword here has been with me for God, I don't even remember. Too... Not even too long. It's been with me for... There. There. I say well over four years. Now it's no family heirloom, but... She's been by my side for a long time. Protected me. Protected those around me. Inspired others to rise up. As Bell sort of puts the tip the sword to his head, he's just like, "I know what you mean, with your philosophy." As Bell goes quiet for a moment, thinking about the past, as Wolf just like, uh, "Um, sir," he's just like, mm. "Oh, I, I apologize. I I blacked out there." For a second. As well as like, well, um, what level would you like to go down to? As Bell's like, we'll go down to, I think it's the 16th floor. Which is the floor that they take wealth originally. As wealth and Bell are talking, wealth and Bell, nah, sorry. Wolf becomes curious about some of his gear and actually talks about what is it made out of. Is it like good armor? Things like that. As Bell speaks saying the armor is... As when he's looking, think, looking at his armor as he looked down, he also realizes his armor is very well worn. It's been through a lot. As Bell's looking at it, he's just like, huh. That is a lot more wear and tear than I remember. As Bell, she's like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people tend to forget how much their armor needs. As Bell's just like, huh. As he sees where there's like chinks in his armor and some bits and pieces where some chain mail has a bit few chains from the chain mail have fallen off he's just like I should get this fixed he's just like well well you're a blacksmith this is my entire role so what do you say Bell want me to make you some new armor or at the very least repair this stuff it's just like do you think you could reforge it somewhat I, I would like to keep the black and the general shape of the armor, but could you, like, add some better metal to it? As Bell's, Walsh well, just like, certain bits and pieces, yeah, but for our other parts, you're just gonna have to completely redo it. Bell's like, what would that cost? It's just like, well, if you and no one. As Bells and Wolf's like, I can get you some great armor. I can make you it. But, well, would you mind me being a more permanent member of your party? Like making a contract with a god. Except I would supply mainly you. As Bell's thinking about this, he's just like, this ain't a bad deal. I'll take it. So he holds out his hand. <laughs> As he speaks, well, Mr. Crozo, you have a deal. As they shake on it, Dolly's just like, at least you're getting better armor. This is quite a lifesaver. You may be my champion, but still, I could at the very least ask you to look presentable. As he's just like, why are we talking about making me your champion now? It's just like, I don't know. You impress me one minute, disappoint me the next. And surprise me another. 
Oh, you are such great entertainment. As she sort of gives a giggle, she disappears from his head. And that's where I'm going to think I'm going to be ending this one off at. Um, sorry this took so long to get out. Like I said, I had a bit of writer's block. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this. Guys, continue with us. Hope you guys have a nice day, nice night, nice life.